Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a step-by-step -step form using Vue.js. Vue.js is a relatively new JavaScript framework and it makes things much quicker and easier and I guess more organized than say doing it in uh, vanilla JavaScript or even jQuery. So let's get started. So as you can see, I have a basic HTML file here, which has the uh, HTML set up for a, a standard HTML5 document. It also has a link to Bootstrap. Uh, Bootstrap 4 and it also has a link to the development version of Vue.js. So if you'd like to get that, you just need to go to the Vue.js website, click to get started and you'll see there's two options, development or production. And I've chosen development because we can then debug the actual uh, code. So if we get started, what we want to do is we want to create a form. Okay. And in this form, we want to have three sections and people have to click next step after they fill out that specific section. Okay, so let's create three sections and each section will have a heading. So I'll just do an H3. And we will then duplicate that three times. Okay, so this will be step one, step two, and then step three. Now that's the form right this minute. Now let's go and set up our view instance. If we go to the bottom of the screen and I have these script tags, we want to create a new view instance. So we'll do const app equals new view. And inside the view object, we want to determine what the actual ID of the container we want view to work within. So that will be, let's just call it app. And then we'll just do form ID equals app. So now view knows that whatever happens within this specific container is going to uh, run through view. Then we'll create a data method and that will also have all the properties in there on our form. So when we uh, create the form, uh, when the form loads for the first time, we want to want view to know what it should expect. So let's create an object called form and inside form, we're going to have name, and we'll assign null to it because it hasn't been filled out. Email, null as well. Uh, phone, null and message, null. So that's set up automatically when view starts up. And also just to make sure that view is actually working, we'll use the mounted method and we'll do alert equals yes. Okay, so now if we go to our blank HTML file, we do refresh the alert happens, which means view is actually running. So as you can see, we have step one, step three and step three. I'll just change that to step two. Sorry. Now, obviously we don't want all the steps to come up at once. I'm just going to remove that alert. We don't want all these steps to come up at once, but we'll keep them there just so we can do a step by step process in building this. So inside each step, we want to ask the first question. Uh, what is your name? So we'll give it a placeholder. What is your name? And we'll also give it a class of form control and form control large. They're bootstrap classes, which will make the form look a bit nicer. In step two, we want to do what is your phone number? And we also want to do what is your email address? We'll make this tell and we'll also make this one type equals email, I believe. If we refresh the page now, you should see what is your name? What is your phone number? What is your email address? And then what we could do with step three, we'll add a text area for a message. And inside there, we'll do type your message. We refresh the page again you'll notice we have all three and I just need to add the class to that as well there we go so we have all our inputs now now we want to separate the steps we want only step one to come up at the start and then when they click next it goes to step two and next to step three so what we need to do now is we need to define in view and tell view how many steps there are so if we go into data and we put Total steps equals, oh, not equals, uh, colon, uh, three. So there are three steps 
And the step that we want to come up first when the page loads is step one. Okay. And then we do in the se each section, we do V if equals step equals equals one. That's for the first step. Second step, two. Third step, three. Now, if we refresh the page, step one should only come up. But there's no way we can go to the second step because we haven't got a button there yet. So let's create that button. We'll go towards the bottom of the sections and we'll create a button and we'll call it next step. And inside that button, let's add a click function so that when someone clicks onto that button, it runs a specific function in view. We'll call that function next step and we will go into our view instance and create a new method under the methods function or methods uh, property or whatever you want to call it. And let's call it next step function. Inside next step, what we want to do basically is just do this step plus plus. It's basically referring to this step, which is here. And it's going to add another one to there or add, make it two. Let's refresh that and go next step. And as you can see, actually, when you click on it, it's going, it's almost like it's refreshing the page. So what we need to do is we need to re prevent this page from doing its natural function of, of what a button does, of reloading the page or what a link does. So if we refresh that now and we go to next step, you'll notice it hasn't done it now. Um, that's almost like event prevent def default in jQuery, in jQuery or JavaScript. Now, um, now that we have the first one done, if we go to step two, if you click next step, we'll go to step three as well. But then when you're on step three, you don't want to go next because it's just going to keep going and nothing is going to come up. So we need to do an if statement on the button. So let's do v if step is not equal to total steps and that means it will just show the button uh, as long as it's not as long as a step isn't equal to the last step we'll refresh it again next step next step and then the third step it doesn't come up anymore uh, then we want to do previous steps so let's copy that and we will do uh, pr previous step and we'll create a new uh, function called previous step or we'll do prev step and then we don't want this to uh, come up if it's the first step so we just do step if step isn't equal to one then then do not show it okay and then we'll create a new function called previous step or prev step and then we do step minus minus so now that we have that and we refresh the page something has gone wrong and i'm just going to quickly look and that's why we haven't comma separated the functions okay so as you can see previous step is not there because it's step one but we type in some details go to next step and previous step then comes up and we can go back and forth as you can see so no previous step on step one and then no next step on step three which is awesome now on step three we want to submit this pretending that it's going to actually submit to a form or something. We want to put a submit button on the third step. So to do that, we could easily just put it in the button inside the third section, or we can just do another if statement, which I will do here. Uh, button V if step equals three, and then we'll do uh, send inquiry. And let's make that go to send inquiry function. We'll create a new function called send inquiry. And let's just do an alert. It's obviously not going to send anything, but this is just to, to test that the button works. Yeah, if we refresh it again, go through all the steps. Done. This has been sent. Okay, so there are a couple of things we haven't done. Firstly, we need to link each input to uh, view so that view can record the data that we're typing in there. If we go into the website now and we refresh it and go to our inspector, there's a Google Chrome plugin that we can use to actually look at 
view, so it's like a view inspector, I actually have to load up the web page not in incognito, which I'm currently in right now. So I'm just going to get out of that and open up a new window, not in incognito. And then if we go to inspect, you'll notice that there's view up here. Click into there, click in root, and then you'll notice that we have all this information here. And you can see email, message, name, phone, that's all null. Okay. So what we want to do is when someone types into the name field, it's all automatically going to go into here reactively. So let's do that. We'll go into the code, go to what is your name, and we'll assign a model to it. So V model equals form dot name. If you go down to our view instant or view object, you'll see form dot name. Okay. And then we have to do V model form dot phone and V model form dot email and then V model form dot message. Okay. If we go into our browser once again. And refresh the page and if I type in something I'll just type test we'll go to inspect and we'll go to our view instance you'll see test is now there now if I type in what is your phone number it's come up automatically type in email address it's all there and then message it's all there as well so all the data is there now and now we can harness that. So usually with a step-by-step -step form, you want to make sure that people fill out the data before they go to the next step. Now this, because this is a simple tutorial, I'm not going to show you how to do the advanced way and use uh, maybe another plugin for validation. I use myself vValidate in Vue.js. Um, but in, in this instance, I'm just going to show you how to do some basic uh, validation. So when someone clicks the next next button or the next step button we want it to check that this field is filled out before you can go to the next step and if it isn't show an error okay so to do that we need to edit the function for next step so let's concentrate on the first step right now if this step equals one so if the current step equals one and if this uh form dot name is not filled out so we'll put the exclamation mark in front then return false okay so now that i've done that if we refresh the page and we try and just go next step we can't because it's not filled out but if i fill something out and then i go to next step it works but we probably want to send and put a message up there or something like that so let's create another piece of data called error in our uh, in our data object and we'll make it an array and we'll go to the top of our uh, underneath our form tag and we'll do span v4 so this is like a for each statement for, uh, v4 e in errors because errors is the actual name of the uh, it's actually error i'll change it to errors so for each each part of errors in it's going to iterate th iterate through the array okay and then we want to put e so that's the actual error that will come up or what's inside that specific uh, array okay so here now what we want to do is we want to go to our next step and we want to do this dot errors equals uh, and we put this here because it's an array. And then, then what we want to do is put, uh, please fill out your name. Okay, so let's refresh the page now. And there was a problem. And there I can see here in the inspector that there's an unexpected token, which is here. And I've done something wrong and I am not exactly sure what I've done, but I think it may be because I've done that. Uh, 
those brackets. So let's just take that out. Now, if we refresh the page again, it should be okay. If I press next and it doesn't work, you'll, you'll notice straight away that it won't allow us to go any further. And it says, it says, please fill out your name. You can easily, I'm just going to make errors, not an array. I'm just going to make it null. Okay. Um, actually, no, we'll keep it as an array. Sorry for chopping and changing. I hope this uh, hasn't confused you too much. So now that that's filled out, if we go next step, it should take us to the next step. And then we want to do for step two. So for step two, let's just copy this and make another if statement. If step is step two, if this form, uh, so in step two, we have uh, phone and email. So if this step form dot phone, so if it's not filled out, then this error is please fill, fill out your phone number. And then we'll also do another if statement. If this form email, please fill out your email address. Okay. So let's do it again. Type, don't type in a name, type in a name, then hit next. Please fill out your phone number. Please fill out your email address. Next step. And then step three, obviously the same kind of thing. If this step equals three, if this form message does not exist, make errors, please fill out your message and then return false. Okay, fill that out, don't fill it out, yep. Don't fill it out, yep. And then we do that. And uh, with this specific, with step three, that's actually gonna, that, that is going to actually go into our send inquiry alert function. Uh, or send inquiry function because because we're on step three the only thing that you can do to validate it would be to click the send message button so now what we'll do is we will refresh go back fill out one fill out two and three fill out don't fill out the message and it says please fill out your message okay and then if it uh if it has been filled out then it should just give us an alert yep but because it has been filled out, what we'll do is we will make this errors null again. So that gets rid of the message. Let's try that. There you go. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much how it works with the step-by-step -step form with view. Obviously with the send inquiry, what you would do is you would then use something maybe like Axios, which is uh, kind of like uh, uh, used to do posts and get requests. And Axios is, works really well to, uh, to send data to PHP to then send a, an, email, an email from this form. I'm not going to show you that in this step because this is more of an introductory tutorial of how you can do a step-by-step -step form. And hopefully this gives you enough information to get going with your own. Now, if you do have any other questions, please let me know. And uh, I, ho I hope that's helped you. Thank you very much.